and gentlemen, look at Kong, the eighth wonder of the world. In this review, I'll be taking a look at the NECA King Kong figure based on the 1933 classic film of the same name. The figure stands 8 inches tall and has over 30 points of articulation. King Kong opened on March 2, 1933 to rave reviews. The film portrays the story of a huge gorilla-like creature dubbed Kong who perishes in an attempt to possess a beautiful young woman played by actress Fay Ray. Willis O'Brien did the stop motion animation for the film. In 1991, the film was deemed culturally, historically, and aesthetically significant by the Library of Congress and selected for preservation for the National Film Registry. There have been several more films and remakes of Kong since 1933, including the 1976 remake starring Jeff Bridges and Jessica Lange, as well as the Peter Jackson directed remake in 2005. Kong has also faced off against Godzilla in the 1962 King Kong vs. Godzilla film as well as the upcoming 2021 film, Godzilla vs. Kong. King Kong comes inside a five panel window box packaging. Towards the bottom of the front is the name King Kong. Moving up the front is a beautiful image of the King Kong figure. Here's the top of the box. Here is the bottom with the barcode. On the side is the name Kong, and another image of the figure with the angry head. Turning around to the back towards the bottom, there are two images of the figure showcasing the two different head sculpts. Moving up is yet another image of the figure from a different angle. And here's a look at the other side panel. Opening the flap that is secured by Velcro, there is yet another image of King Kong as he appears to be emerging out of the shadows. Here's a look at the figure inside. Now with Kong out of the package, let's take a closer look. The head that is on the body out of the package is a more goofy looking head, but it is movie accurate. The actual skin tone is a darkish gray. He has little white eyes with light brown pupils. Below his right eye are several small bloody cuts. His upper left lip and eye have bloody cuts as well. Kong's mouth is sculpted open as it was often seen in the film. The paintwork is nicely done on the teeth and tongue. Even the roof of the mouth is sculpted and painted. I'm very impressed with how the mouth turned out. Looking at the side of the head, you can see Kong's little ear. And here's a look at the other side of the head. Moving down to the body, there are more bloody cuts on Kong's chest. The chest is the same grayish color as his face. But the fur on Kong is a very nicely painted brownish wash with some slight orange mixed in. The sculpting work on the fur is very well done. Kong has fisted hands on out of the package. The sculpt work is very nice as you can see all the wrinkles in the skin. The arm itself is a continuation of the body with the same color wash. Probably one of my biggest gripes with the figure is the double jointed elbows when the arm is straight down. I appreciate the extra mobility and posing Kong can pull off, but man are they sure ugly and distracting to look at. The biggest problem is the hinges are grey and the fur is brown, so they stick out like a sore thumb. The lower half is pretty much the same color wash going on, but the knees and calves on mine have a lot more reddish wash going on than the thigh and foot, so it does stand out. The feet like the hands are nicely sculpted with the same wrinkles in the skin. 
especially when you look at the bottoms. He also has peg holes on his feet. Turning around to the back, the lower legs look just as bad as the elbows, with the contrasting of the fur color and the gray hinges. I really wish the hinges were painted brown to try and blend in better. The great sculpt work of the fur carries over to the back side, and the same brown wash is present. The articulation joints aside, I think the great sculpting more than makes up for it. Kong has a very impressive amount of articulation. Starting with the head, it can look left and right. It can also tilt on either side. The head can look down this much. and up this far. His arms can move outwards this far. They can go up, down, and rotate 360 degrees. He has a bicep swivel. He has double joint elbows that can bend in this much. There is also rotation at the upper and lower parts of the elbow. The hands can rotate as well as hinge back and forth. The torso can rotate as well as crunch forward this much. One thing to note, when he is all the way crunched forward, there is a gap on the back side. He can lean back this far. The legs are on a ratchet joint that go outwards this far. And can kick forward this far. There is a slight rotation at the thigh. The knees are double jointed and can bend in this much. There is also rotation at the knees. The feet can move back and forth, and they do have ankle rockers. For those that are curious, you can get Kong on all fours, but he doesn't look that good in my opinion. These are the included accessories with Kong. He comes with an extra set of open hands and an alternate angry head. First up is the alternate angry head. While not as movie accurate as the other head, I personally prefer this one. His mouth is wide open with his large sharp teeth on full display. The inside of the mouth is painted quite nicely, just as the other one. The same bloody cuts can be found on this head as well. The head is on a ball joint and is very easily removable. Once the head is popped off, just pop the new one on the ball joint. Here is a look at Kong with the angry head looking very menacing.
With the fists and hands attached, and thanks to the double jointed elbows, you can get Kong beating his chest. Next is the pair of open hands. They did such a good job sculpting these. They look just like a real gorilla's hands would look like, with all the wrinkles and creases in the skin. They even have fingernails sculpted. The hands are on pegs, so to swap them out, just pull the current ones off, and then pop the new ones in. Here is a look at Kong with the open hands attached. With the extra head and hands, it definitely gives you several options on how to display your figure. Now let's compare Kong to some other figures. First up is the NECA Planet of the Apes Gorilla Soldier. Next is a NECA Predator. A NECA Gurmon Stripe. A Master of the Universe Classic Sea Man. A Mortal Kombat 11 Spawn. A Marvel Legends Beast. A Star Wars Black Series Admiral Akbar. And finally, a McFarlane Saigor 2 figure. So that is my review of the NECA King Kong figure. I think with great sculpting and paint, the figure is a must own. King Kong has always been one of my favorite movies, so I may be a little more biased. But this really is a great figure. My only complaints are the double jointed elbows and knees do look kind of ugly, and I wish they could have included an Anne Darrell figure, like McFarlane did with their old King Kong figure. I think another cool accessory could have been removable metal shackles. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button, and if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button as well as click on the notification bell. Leave me a comment, and follow me on social media. Links are in the description below. Thanks for watching. Well, Denim, the airplane's got it. Oh, no. It wasn't the airplanes. It was beauty killed the beast.